Hey, Randy. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining this call. Um, I just thought we should uh, chat and, you know, so how are you doing today? Good morning. Doing well. I'm doing as, as best as can be expected under these challenging times. Yeah, I know we are all going through the challenging time. Um, I was just curious, Randy. I know that you are a super positive person always. Uh, you know, you run a three, two, three successful businesses all the time. So, uh, you know, but whenever I talk to you, it's so positive about uh, the future. How do you keep up with this positiveness? And what did you do actually in the last two months um, in this crisis time? The crisis hit us exceptionally hard. As you know, we have the tour business at St. Patrick's Cathedral. We had um, a contract to sell beginning April 1st, about a million passes. So all the hard work, the years that we had put behind this were all set to come together on April 1st. So when the governor had issued a letter mid-March, March 18th or 16th, that New York State was closed, it was exceptionally devastating as we had all of our revenue projections from April 1st forward uh, to capitalize on the greatest tourism market in the world, New York City. So that, uh, that was quite devastating. Um, our partners at SJ Innovation, our team there, uh, were put on pause, uh, as so many of the teams we work with. The other company that I run is a U.S. Baldwin Energy Company. So we serve primarily the retail community, schools and churches. So in one fell swoop, all of our clients closed with no understanding of when they would reopen. Furthermore, their future became unsure. So we started seeing more retailers permanently closed. The restaurants that we had served for years would now be permanently closed 25% of small businesses in the United States will not reopen. So in that, knowing that I service those clients, what does that mean for my business? What does that mean for the promises I've made my vendors? Uh, what does that mean for my staff? So it was a terrifying moment. One of my key clients, Chanel Stores, that I'm proud to service for many decades, had reached out to me in my company, U.S. Baldwin Energy, with regard to UV lighting, because UV lights, as you've seen in the subway and in other environments, will kill virus, bacteria, including COVID-19. As we spoke, I saw the products, I saw how they were used, and I started understanding more about UV technology in generally, and it's very dangerous, it's damaging. It makes sense in an operating room where everything's white, you can come in and hit it with strong UV light for 20 minutes and kill any lingering bacteria or virus. But in an environment of high color, rich colors like Chanel stores or any of the other retailers, hitting a dressing room with, for 20 minutes with an intense UV light will dramatically damage the fabrics, the colors, the dyes, it'll be counterintuitive to the product. If you have a blue shirt that's in that dressing room that you're gonna treat after a guest comes in there and you put that blue shirt back onto the sales floor, it won't be the same color blue anymore because it would be the same as leaving it in a window for a month. And it would tr fade dramatically and obviously that wouldn't be a good reflection on the retail store having a variety of colors within the same product skew. They take quality control very seriously. What that same factory had done was they had come out with a product called Aviar about uh, 20 years ago. And my relationship with this factory, having traveled with them uh, throughout Taiwan, throughout Hong Kong, uh, presented to me a chemical-free way to kill virus, to kill bacteria, including COVID-19, by creating hypochlorous. And they sent me a sample of device to do this. So now working with my old team, I was able to present to my retail community a methodology to clean and sanitize space that wouldn't leave their workers drowning in Clorox and Purell. 
I think every good salesman only ever wants a great product. I think like any actor wants a great script or any chef wants great and fresh ingredients to work with. So immediately when I had seen this product, I started bringing it out to my US Bulb clients to show them how to prepare their business and re-prepare their business and to maintain and sanitize their business in a way that was chemical free, in a way that was affordable, where they wouldn't have to buy $50 or $60 drums of sanitizer and be able to manage their space. So the response from my client base that I'm proud to serve for many decades was overwhelming. We sold out immediately. And uh, it put that spark, that positive energy back into what I do. Waking up every day as a small business person, you kind of look at the field in front of you and how you're going to compete on that day. What products do you have to bring to market? How much do you owe your vendors? How much do your clients owe you? What is the forecast of how you're going to work together? And is it overall a profitable dynamic? Many times business people get stuck in unprofitable dynamics just because it's the career they know and they feel that they are too old or too set in their ways to become part of something new. And I assure you that's not the case. If you would have told me at New Year's that I'd be in the sanitizer business during the first week of June in 2020, <laughs> I, would have, I would have told you, I'm sorry, that's just not a business I know. But you have done, I mean, how do you personally change your mindset? That's one of the things you know, I'm passing to my team members always that we are in one business. That does not mean that we will stick around with it. If situation comes in, how do you change your, I mean, what was the struggle you faced initially? I mean, one point um, you mentioned here that whether it is going to be profitable, profitable or not. So um, how do you feel about that side of it also personally? Then, you know, how did you change your mindset? I think as small business people, you always think of yourself as a boat compared to a cruise ship. And the maneuverability of it, the ability to quickly pivot is what makes, which gives us an advantage in the marketplace where they say we can't possibly compete with a cruise ship. They can hold so many people. We can only own, we can only hold six. They can hold 6,000. We can't compete. But where you can compete is when the water gets rough, you can quickly pivot. You can pivot away from the iceberg and you can pivot away from rough seas, and that is your advantage. So some are, have the advantage of being big, and in many times the advantage of being small is in our diversity and our ability to pivot when the seas get rough. And in my business career, the seas have never been more rough than at this moment. Thank you, Randy. This is very insightful. The keyword is here, pivot. Um, so as a business, uh, you suggest everyone to try to do that. Even uh, testing time will come on our way. I mean, it is not over yet, right? It's just beginning. Um, looks like we're, um, the rest of the year. We're all trying to thrive in the new normal. We're all trying to do honorable things that will help us collectively and, of course, individually to provide for our families and to provide for our businesses. My advice to anybody is to not get stuck identifying themselves with a specific career. If specifically, if you had said to me, well, you can't do this because you're in lighting. And then I got to see the similarities in the products that it came from the same factory with the same people that can be distributed to my same client base. That's really what I had built was the infrastructure of product in and product out and giving advice along the way. Um, the product itself was simply widgets. The relationships are what carry forward. The relationships are what sustain and the relationships are what we've built our careers upon. Thank you, Randy. Um, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. My dear friend, it's been many years since we've worked together. And I'm very proud that we continue to work together to this day. You and your family, take care.